At Go Roughly, we are huge dog lovers, we are motorcycle travelers, but we are also coffee fanatics. And so we have searched far and wide for the perfect campsite espresso because just a coffee won't do. You need an espresso to really get you in the gut. So we thought that when we discovered the Nano Presso, that was it, search was over. And we've used it all the way up to the Arctic Ocean and back down to Baja, California, and had great results with it. So a lot of experience there. We have recently obtained the Auden mini espresso maker, mini portable electric espresso maker. Not sure how exactly they go with that. Um, and our initial tests with this are phenomenal. So what we have here is a total all out death match, okay? Which is the better portable espresso maker? The Nano Presso, which it says on both sides, or the Auden, which it only says on one side. So first off, um, size wise, let's do a size comparison. Clearly there's a difference, okay? Size does matter. Absolutely don't listen to anyone who tells you otherwise. And in this case, smaller size is better. So clearly the Nano Presso is like, I don't know, a third shorter, right? Also add in the fact that we have the double espresso uh, sort of adapter in here, which lets you do a two shot instead of a one shot. So if you remove that and really did a one shot to one shot, this would even be about a centimeter uh, shorter. So that's really nice. In terms of girth, pretty similar, okay? Pretty similar. Um, maybe a little bit narrower here is probably fair to say. However, you do have the hand pump and that adds uh, a little bit of, uh, it, it sticks out, let's say that. Okay, so size wise. Now, Nano Presso, really basically a simple, uh, you know, coffee creation here. We have the, the top where sort of the, the pressure is gonna build up. We have our little shot piece. I don't have coffee in here right now. And, and the sort of, space where it fits in, right? Um, basically, you're gonna put the hot water in here. You're gonna connect it. You're gonna put the coffee in, tamp it down. And that's pretty much it. You're ready to rock and roll, okay? At this point, open it up and you start pumping. And everything's gonna go perfectly smoothly as long as you have squeezed everything tight, that you've tamped down the coffee just right, no extra spaces, nothing's out of alignment it's gonna go well, okay? So really simple there. Let's look at the out-in in terms of simplicity. So nice thing, it does come sort of with the cup that you can already use this for. It's like it's capture basin. Basically, we have a similar setup here. We've got sort of the holder, um, the coffee. Maybe there's an extra piece here in the fact that here's your, your coffee well, uh, your shot. You're gonna tamp this down. You're gonna connect it, okay? Make sure that you, you press this together nicely. And then this guy is going to go in here just like that. Not a sort of perfect fit, but it ultimately, when it's uh, screwed into place, it's going to, to uh, you know tighten in just right and you're gonna have a, a solid connection there. Okay, so at that point, you've got your coffee in, you're ready to go. Um, you've got the water up here. So I, this is where in the, the water sort of well, I keep the, the tamper and scooper. And so you basically put your water in here and where's the pump? There's no pump. Well, there is a pump. That's the dog go roughly that goes nowhere without the dog. Uh, not a coffee drinker though. So she's totally uninterested in this. No hand pump because it's an electric pump. So at this point, um, you're done with sort of your your exercise. Um, and that's a, a big sort of distinguishing factor of these two. So let's go back here. What are you putting in? You are putting into the Nano Presso hot water. It's obviously it's still wet. So um, you've got to make sure that the water is hot. We have had plenty of cases where by the time you finished your, your camp stove, you know, you heated up the water and everything, you put it in here, you get everything sorted in. By the time you sort of run it through, it's really at this point lukewarm, okay? So you need sort of an after plan to get it back to that piping hot that, that you really want, especially like first thing in the morning or midday if it's like a cold sort of Arctic summer and you're, you know, you need a pick me up. So that is a key 
sort of issue here, or maybe let's call it shortcoming, that it is totally battery free, there's no electricity going on, but you need to find a way to heat your water, okay? And so I have it here. We basically have to bring one of these guys, which is one of these like water heating filaments, and then you need a plug, right? Not really something you're gonna run off of your motorcycle. So um, that's sort of an added uh, component to this in terms of if you really want a one-to-one -one comparison, you have the heater built in. So the pump is battery powered, but the other element that you're getting to this is it is heating the water. So you're gonna get, uh, what is it? Something like, they say something like 100 uh, espressos if you put the water in already pump, like piping hot. We don't generally do that. We'll put it in uh, pretty much room temperature or even cold if it's first thing in the morning. And this will warm it up to piping hot. It will push it through. It will give you an, uh, you know, your espresso. And the espresso is still hot when it comes out. It is nice and piping hot when it comes out. At that point, you're gonna get four to five uh, espressos, four to five shots. So clearly there's a limit here before you need to plug it in. But a big difference, especially middle of the day, when this guy, you just take it out, you put coffee in it, you put water at any temperature in it, and you're good to go. Afterwards, of course, you're gonna use the flat back here, which my uh, recently cut nails are not allowing me to open, but you've got a USB-C back here, and uh, you plug it in on your vehicle as you go for ne the next couple of hours, and you're ready to do it again if you really need that kind of a refueling for a second time that day. Uh, again, the Nanopresso, you're going to have to sort out a water heating solution. So if you're at the campsite, maybe that's no big deal first thing in the morning because you probably have your camping stove set up, you're probably making eggs, you're probably making uh, bacon or whatever it is that you do. Um, you're heating water and so you're just using that with the Nanopresso. So in that sense, the smaller, simpler, nothing to charge, you don't have to worry that you forgot to charge it, uh, really, really effective. Um, if, if, if sort of hot water is a question and it absolutely is on a motorcycle trip, well, this is really, this is your champion right here. Um, so that's a key sort of comparison of the two. Also keep in mind, midday, the last thing you wanna do is take out your, um, your sort of camp stove and set everything up so that you can heat water. That is a key reason why we have sort of not used this as much as we might have, have hoped. And so then the, the alternative is you, you pack a thermos, you put hot water in the thermos that you boiled in the morning, and you know depending upon where you put it on the bike and it's not getting sort of the cold air of movement, uh, it might still be sort of hot enough by the end of the day, but it's not piping hot. So again, another plus in, in, the, in the out in category, uh, because midday, as long as you've made sure to charge this, and that's the key, you're gonna have a hot cup and, and you're good to go. Now, my understanding is it also does a cold press or a, a cold shot. Um, I'm less interested in that because I like them hot and strong, hot and strong, always hot and strong. Uh, okay, so simplicity wise, quite simple. Yes, this is gonna give you the additional tiniest workout uh, for the hand pumping. So maybe, you know, if you're otherwise a lazy person, battery powered is better. If you feel like you need some exercise, uh, this is your guy but don't underestimate the heating of the water. One other thing about that, we also use this to heat water sort of just generally. So uh, Jess prefers a more of a latte. So she's getting her nice strong shot here. We can run another sort of uh, well of water through here, heat it up and either let it pass through without putting coffee or without putting more co new coffee in. And she's gonna get sort of more of a latte when we then mix in the, uh, the creamer or powdered milk or, or whatever. Um, and so that way you're not just getting the espresso, but you're sort of getting it how you want it and you're taking advantage of the fact that this thing heats to sort of get your, your latte. I do it as a cortado, so sort of a one of these for the espresso and one of these for hot water. So I think we have a pretty clear winner when it comes to at least our use case and go roughly where we are on an around the world motorcycle trip. This is your guy. Uh, it's really sort of hard to beat. And in terms of the coffee, I mean, this is allowing you to try coffees everywhere you go. The one thing in both of these cases that you have to keep in mind about the coffee, the ultra fine sort of espresso rinds, 
really isn't gonna work in either of these guys. In this case, you're probably gonna find that it either doesn't come out or that you'll actually sort of start to see it come out from the seals because it just, the pressure builds up too much and something will fail. Doesn't mean you're gonna break this, it just means that that shot of espresso is a failure and you gotta start over. This guy, uh, in our experience, basically just will start dripping through and um, you're not gonna sit around for an hour while it drips little by little. So get the right kind of grind, that's gonna make a huge difference. Make sure you charge it and then if you go roughly, you're gonna get the out in because it really checks all the boxes. Deathmatch winner.